Hello and welcome to the first ever. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of the Utopia Project. I am Chunky T and I'm joined by my brother Jack. Hello. And one of my friends, Matthew. Good evening. Right. Um, basically, we don't know really what we're doing. Uh, we're pretty nervous. And um, yeah, this whole show is based around a hypothetical utopia where we all sort of bring things to the table throughout the show and uh, just decide whether or not they're going to go into our utopia or whether we're going to bin them forever. Um, first thing to talk about, really, is the fact that we haven't planned a theme tune, have we? Not at all. Um, <laughs> Winging it, mate. <laughs> yeah, that was probably the first thing we should have thought of. Um, but what we have cobbled together is a little national anthem of basically just the American national anthem that we're just going to warble some shit over the top of. So, should we... Should we start it? Let's proceed. Yeah. Hold the tape. May we all stand for the national anthem of Utopia. Oh, well, this is another fucking podcast. Every cunt is doing one now. So we thought we'd do one. Don't know the tune to this bit So we'll just listen to the music <laughs> Do you want to join in? I, I can't, I can't top that Should we, should we, should we just, uh, what, I don't even, what's this bit? I don't know <laughs> Just chilled, isn't it? Yeah, right This is, uh, this is not what I remember <laughs> <laughs> Should we just gloss over that? Yeah, bit? so uh, we'll just fade that out nicely and we'll uh, bring in our nice little uh, <coughs> bed to talk to. Right. What do you reckon is that, lads, for the uh, first little bit? Yeah, it's uh, pretty good. Shall yeah, um, yeah well, maybe we uh, rediscuss the, uh, um, the, the the sound beds and the uh, theme tune. Yeah. Um, maybe oh, the- to match the theme tune, we just record it in an elevator. Yeah. yeah. Just take I mean, all still work. find an elevator, ride it up and down continuously. Yeah. For this an is hour proper lift music, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so it's pretty funky. And one thing we should maybe check, um, well, maybe not check, more warn for strong language. Yeah, yeah, that probably should have been the first, yeah. the first point of call. Slightly um, late, isn't it? Well, it's a learning curve for us all, isn't it? Yeah. Um, by the way, if you listen to this, um, there will be strong language. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we'll copy and paste that towards the beginning of it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right, so there's a whole lot of things to talk about uh, on this show. This is obviously the pilot, so we're half winging it, half give it a bit of thought, and uh, just seeing what's going. Um, so, what is the first port of call? I don't know, you wrote Let's the show. Oh yeah, it's, it's our own personal <laughs> pet peeves. Pet peeves. What we want banning from our hypothetical country city of Utopia. Um, Jack, I, th- I think it, I'm just going to stop you there. I think it's a world. It's a world, a it's, whole world. It's a whole world. See, we haven't even decided on that. That's yeah. how much prep we've. I'm just going. Ahead, I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. This, this is our world. Okay. Okay. We, d- we decide what gets in and what burns up in the atmosphere. Yeah. So we are God. Yeah. We are literally God. Wow. We are the three what? gods of Utopia. Uh, to be honest, lads, I think that's that's a bit too much responsibility for me. <laughs> just <laughs> like, just call us the three fat Thors. Yeah. Well, that's it. I'm chubby. Yeah. Oh, that's up for debate, <laughs> Matt. Okay. Um, oh, oh, no, of us. Oh, no, of us. <laughs> right, so uh, should we get into uh, the first uh, pet peeve? Uh, Matthew, do you want to go first? Um, yeah, sure. I didn't know you convinced me first. So, yeah. Um, quite a fitting uh, for me this week is the small printing contract. Absolutely stitch you up every time, don't they? Like... They're always something important that's always going to come across an issue. Yeah. Just put it in. I mean, no one really reads contracts anyway, but you like to think if it is going to nah, be. Nah, fuck important. it, just sign it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what an attitude. What I find is everybody does that, and then I also get the feeling that everybody just goes, yeah, fuck it, sign it. And then the small print pretty much says all of the above is completely irrelevant. Yeah, but it's, it's something like, right, I'm covered. Like, the reason why it's come to me this week as a pet peeve is. Um, it actually happened yesterday. I had an issue with my bike, motorbike. Only had it about a month and a half. I had to get it back to the dealership. 
Um, I thought, well, yeah, I've got, I got road sword and recovery breakdown through my insurance. So I'll, um, I'll give them a ring, get them out. Well, it turns out that they only cover me for 20 miles from the breakdown to where I'm planning on going. So you just got home. Well, no, I didn't even get that because I needed to get it back to the dealership because it's still under warranty. Right. But I was 35 miles away from the dealership. Oh, joyous. So, over the 20 miles, 15 miles extra, 45 quid. Right. Shambles, yeah. mate. <laughs> shambles. Absolute shambles. <laughs> thing is, um, I, can, I can imagine you saying that down the phone to someone, just, this is an absolute shambles. <laughs> yeah. This is an outrage. Human, just at the side of the road, still in your helmet. Why well, can't I hear you? <laughs> <laughs> it, to be fair, I may well have done, not on the side of the road, but... Yeah, um, and it, it's just irritating. Like, if it's important and it's going to potentially stick to you up, yeah, I know the companies do it on purpose because they want to make a bit of money. They made 45 quid out of me, the robbing bastards. But um, Not that you're bitter. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Pricks. Um, <laughs> language, Timothy. Um, but yeah, no, it's, um, it's really irritating, and I'm now 45 quid out of pocket because of my inability. Really, it's my inability of reading. Yeah. Uh, well, or just wanting to read what yeah, is in the, the print. The problem is, it's um, it, you know, it, it's, it's an A4 piece of paper with tiny writing, and you just go, do you know what? I want my bike. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's the money. Give me my bike. So yeah. seen a bit. That's yeah. It. I want my insurance. So yeah. I can ride. Yeah. That's it. I'll just, I'll just pay, yeah. Have Have you read the terms and conditions? Click. Yes, I have. Yeah. No. Who, who reads terms and conditions? <laughs> what <it>. loser <laughs> reads the terms and conditions? So, what are you wanting to like ban then? Are you wanting to ban terms and conditions as a rule, or just the, the contracts in general? I mean, there's got to be terms and conditions to everything. Otherwise, utopia will be an absolute shitstorm. Yeah. Um, but uh, straight off just, the bat, just, just carnage yeah, everywhere. Yeah, absolute mayhem. No terms and conditions. I'll do what the fuck I want. Um, but it's it's the small print. It's the finer stuff. Like they should tell me, right? You, your breakdown's covered. You know, you've got this level of breakdown. It covers you for this. This is what it covers you up to. Because it was too late by the point I'd realised that yeah. it only covered me for twenty miles. Yeah. If I knew that, I would have upped my breakdown cover to a higher level. Because I'm never going to be 20 miles. Like, the chances of me being within 20 miles. Walk it back, aren't you? Yeah, mate. You've got a breakdown? Yeah, if you want to push my... It's not light. If you want to push my right bike <laughs> I'll back, carry it, mate. Yeah, I'm a gladiator. Sling it on your shoulder. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's the small print. They should tell you exactly what you're covered and what you're not. And okay. give you the opportunity to potentially upgrade yeah. what cover you get. Just not loads of shit of extra, like, if oh, you do this, yeah. if you do that. If you do... Yeah, you don't want it to go on forever, do you? There's, yeah. There's points to it, like the finer points. But with something like that, it's... Why, especially why... with the... Especially the price of the, ex, you know, the additional mileage, forty-five quid for an extra fifteen miles. Yeah. Why would they give you all the information though, when instead they can write you out a nice little paragraph with loads of shit in, and then just lead you into a nice little terms and conditions trap? Well, by the way, you owe us five hundred quid. Yeah, but that's what I want to get rid of. I don't <laughs> yeah. want that in our utopia. That's, uh, that's a very valid point. You what shot you, me down there. What do you reckon, Jack? I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. You I, see. I, it's his... Go on, go on. There's just no, there's no argument against it, isn't there? I don't think anyone in the history of terms and conditions <laughs> has ever read terms and conditions. I don't even think the people that write terms and conditions read them. <laughs> no, they just, just smash the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. I think if you look close enough, it's just loads of letters. It looks just like a three-year-old had a go on your laptop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone spilled like a glass of drink on it and then it's tried literally, to wipe it up. <laughs> all it, I can tell you now, all it is is somebody's gone, oh, right, you need to... Uh, Dave, mate... Um, can you write all the terms and conditions for this contract that we're doing for all these millions of people? And they go, yeah, yeah, Sam, mate, yeah. Gets home, add a few beers, halfway through writing it, gets a bit of writer's block. And then the cat walked across his keyboard and he was like, ah, fuck it, that'll do. That cat's onto something there. Yeah. Or there's the alternative is where every single word they put in the terms and conditions, they use a thesaurus like Joey from Friends yeah. to make it sound all big and important <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um, like baby Joey yeah baby kangaroo and uh, yeah just use as a thesaurus for every word so no one even understands what the terms and conditions mean anyway yeah you see for, for myself as a business owner oh whatever yeah <laughs> I have terms and conditions and everything like that, and I need them. But in the interest of fairness, it's not a shitload of stuff in small print that you got to sift through. And that's what it's I've got like: the issue bang, with. bang, 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 bang. These are the terms and conditions. You will give me money. I won't get it back. 
end of story, yeah. basically, <laughs> to cover my arse. Um, I don't know. The trouble is with this show is we haven't really decided for this section who decides whether it's in or out. Yeah. Um, w- what are we thinking? Like, majority I, vote or...? I, w- I would say just any pet peeve. We're God. So any pet peeve we have... All right, so this section... Throw that shit out. This, yeah, so this section is just whatever we bring to the table, Bit it's it. gone. Don't, yeah. No argument, like... Whatever. This, this is just, we're creating a world, by the way, I'm having none of that. Yeah. <laughs> right. just, to, just to clarify, it's not terms and conditions as a whole. It's, it's just it's the mumbo small jumbo print. and yeah, the, the small print. Yeah, the load of yeah. crap that you don't yeah. need to know. Yeah. And the small print. Just tell you yeah. the main, you know, tell us the main deeps. Right, so. Crack on. So small print is gone. Is out. Boom. Right, there would be a sound effect there if I'd loaded it into the, Amazing. Into the software. Great. So. Jack, you're pretty good at beatboxing. Do you want to do, uh, do an explosion for us or something? <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Not that'll not. do. Ah! That's probably more my breath than anything. <laughs> right. I I'm going to poison this mic now. Um, right, uh, Jack, do you want to go on to yours? Uh, yeah, by all means. Um, What's pissed you off this week, mate? S- eh? Not specifically this week, but in, in general, really. But I have experienced it this week because I I experience it most of my life. Right. Um, it's not being stupid, is it? No, that's 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 <laughs> not pet peeve. That just happens. Um, so my pet peeve is, and and I'm I'm just straight up saying I'm having none of this in our world, and that is people that that drag you into a story that you don't want to listen to. A bit like Matt's Matt's one. Yeah. Matt. Well, yes and no. The thing oh. is, I saw I saw you write down some notes halfway through. Matt was talking, and now this is your pet peeve. Oh all, it, all it says is <laughs> like Matt's boring shit. That's yeah. what I'm banning. Yeah, I'm banning boring gingers. So Matt's not allowed. Sorry. Oh yeah. By no. the way, if there's any gingers listening, uh, probably best to tune out. Yeah. There may be a. I'm little, out. See you later, boys. <laughs> there may be a little bit of ginger talk. Anyway, this yeah. is this is my pet peeve. Yeah. Cool. Let's we get let back Matt to you. Talk. It's, it's all about now. you, Jack. Come on. Um, so, people that drag you into a story, but there's a specific way that people do it. Now, you'll just be sat there, minding your own business, and someone, usually in the vicinity of you, because it'd be a bit weird if they didn't, will just be like, huh, yeah, I can't believe that. Like looking at the phone or like Yeah, looking at the phone or, or reading something. It's yeah. something that they clearly want to tell you about without going... Hey, mate, look at this. Yeah. yeah. So they do yeah. that for you to go, oh, what's the matter, mate? Yeah. <laughs> See, they've dragged you in. Oh, and the re- it's you know, so I'm, hard, mate. That I'm going be, to I'm gonna be honest. The main reason it, is, it pisses me off and it is a pet peeve is not because they do that, but it's because every fucking time I bite and I get dragged <laughs> in and like, I know it's happening and it still happens... And I just go. I'm like, oh look, hook, line, and sinker. You fucking got me. So the issue we've got, you, the issue you've got, is you. Yeah, you're, so the, you're the pet peeve. You're banned from Utopia, is what you're getting at. Wow, that already is a, that for episode is... one. Sorry, mate, you sacked. We're That's now down to fucking... two gods. Jolly good. <laughs> That's a fucking loophole and a half, isn't it? That's the next thing I'm banning. Fucking loopholes. <laughs> Save it for next week. Oh. Save it for next week. I do, I do get what you mean though. Like. Um... It's it's just the aggravation, and you sit there and you go, I'm not doing it. Especially if like if it's someone that you I don't know, like a colleague or a friend that you see quite a lot or what, anything like that, and you, you know that they do it, and you, you when you know the people who who do that sort of thing, yeah, and you're yeah. like, I'm not doing it. I'm not even going to look at them. I can hear them, <laughs> and then, but I've managed probably out of I don't know about 200 times that that's happened to me. I've managed probably two or three times to go like not doing it and yeah. then if you do manage it the, the the sense of like like pride that you've managed to ignore them and hear them eventually just go hmm. <laughs> and then try and do it to somebody else yeah, in to, the room. to just hear the <laughs> hear the hmm subside yeah <laughs> and they're like i've just wasted five minutes of my life making random noises trying to get someone's attention yeah. when they're gonna go hey up <laughs> if someone just straight up went hey oh, mate have a look at this <laughs> Get your laughing box around this. See what you think. I'll be like, your laughing box. I'll be like, oh, sound. That's not good, is it? But no, they have to be like, hmm. Huh. Yeah, can't believe it. So I go, oh, go on then, enlighten me as to what shit you're looking at. It's usually really fucking dull as well, isn't yeah. it? I noticed this. I've seen this on Facebook. There's only a, there's a, there's a flea collar here for a cat. 
and it, it's been dying their their fur. You yeah. never, and you're like, I don't give a fuck, mate. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me get on with my shit. I mean, judge it on the person. If they're making the noise, you look to your right, and there's some bloke that's like wearing a big furry coat, pissing himself and petting a pigeon. <laughs> Just don't engage, mate. No, no. Simple as that. Yeah. Because it's going to be absolute codswallop, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Garbage. Judge it yourself. <laughs> it's like, but it's always like you say. It's always boring shit. Somebody, somebody go, huh? Oh, you never guess this. This fan. Fucking blows air, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No shit, dickhead. Yeah. Amaze them. <laughs> yeah. You never guess this. Um, I'm, I'm afraid, Adam. I, I don't want to guess this. <laughs> yeah. Basically. You'll never guess what. Obviously, I won't because I don't even know who you are. So I don't know what you're thinking. Why are you I'll talking to me? Yeah. I'm in a public bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Why are you in my urinal <laughs> cubicle for? Why are you in my cubicle? Stop cottaging me. <laughs> What about as an alternative? I don't. I've, I've never tried. I don't think I've got the confidence to try it. But maybe when it next happens, turn around, and look at them, but just don't say anything. Just stare them in the eyes. <laughs> and then if if they engage and they see that as like, oh, he's interested, halfway through, just look back at what you're doing. Yeah. Just, and then when they go, are you listening? You go, oh, oh, sorry, mate. No. What? Yeah. Just cut them off. <laughs> yeah. Mid sentence. Oh, oh shit! How long you been sat there? Yeah. Do it. Do it back to them then. So they lure you into a story. <laughs> yeah. Story. Story. Yeah, that worked. They lure you into a story. You, like, pretend that you've got into their story and lure, lure yourself into it and then just cut that line. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> See you later. See you later, mate. <laughs> Had enough of you. Yeah. Right, so, what, what, what are you actually wanting about? Like, you want... Them people, the people, anybody who does that, just you're not allowed. Fuck or off, just out, get the, out. Just yeah. the actual act of doing it. Yeah, itself. it cannot be done. No. Mm. It, what, what would be the punishment then? Because you can't just stop, like get them out. So, so say someone comes into Utopia, they do, they commit this act. What sort of punishment? Like beheading? Or well, they get um, buried out of Utopia, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. I, maybe maybe a, 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 two no. weeks to learn the lesson. They're not allowed back no, in. No, no learning any lesson. That's it. You do it, you're gone, It's mate. on the terms and conditions. You should have read the terms and conditions. It's on the terms and conditions. It's one of the clear ones. We tell them, no doing this shit. If they do it, <laughs> they're, out. they're fucked. Right, yeah. okay. I'm going to say I'm gonna say specifically that they get booted out by a giant golden foot Yeah. that's in this town square, and it literally just boots them off of the world. Sweet. That is a big boot. Yeah. Right, so do you want to toss that into, uh, the, I don't know, the volcano that is within Utopia? Pop, yeah. Pop that issue in. Yeah, I'm just, just going to pop it in now. <laughs> okay, go on. All right, cool. I, I don't really know what that sound was, mate, but okay. That was someone getting kicked out of the world. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> By the giant wow. golden foot, obviously. <laughs> right. Obviously. Uh, yeah, so, so my pet peeve, just to wrap this segment up a little bit, um, is basically um, it's one thing that me and Jack were talking about the other day and the more I got thinking about it after we had the conversation the more it really pissed me off and I've never got it and every summer and I mean I'm talking about like my own parents here a lot of the older generation of oh it's uh, it's only 30 degrees outside stick the kettle on I'll have a, I'll have a cup of tea yeah. <laughs> you fucking what mate it's fucking boiling. I and they always say the same thing. It cools you down. It cools you down. Because <laughs> uh, it's warm, it goes in and it cools you down. It increases your body temperature. And uh, that annoyed me enough. And then Jack kindly pointed out something that f- really fucking pissed me off. Yeah, explain your bullshit science after right, this one. Right, so these are the same people. They'll go for a nice winter's walk. If you're in the car, they'll be like, oh, stick the kettle on. I'll have a nice warm cup of coffee or a cup of tea. It'll warm me up. So does it warm you up or does it fucking cool you down? <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what it does. <laughs> fucking neither. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the only difference it makes is you've got a belly full of fucking tea. Yeah. <laughs> it quenches your thirst. That's about it, dickhead. You do nothing for the United Kingdom's stereotype. <laughs> like, yeah. do you want a scone and a crumpet with it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like, no, I don't care what the weather is. I'm having a cup of tea, and for some reason, I'm using the weather to justify it. Yeah, there's no need to justify yeah. a cup of tea. You want a cup of tea? Have a cup of tea, man. Yeah, and the thing is, I thought about it, and I was like, I don't want to ban hot drinks. I don't I don't personally drink many hot drinks. I have uh, a hot chocolate in the winter if it's cold to child. warm me up a little bit, but that is, like, the only thing. I'm like, oh, warm drink, warm food. You know what I mean? That's, that's fine. But, so, uh, I thought... 
as as a like bring it to the table i thought well what i'm actually banning is that fucking reasoning like like i don't want to hear it do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, i don't yeah. want to hear tea or coffee science just fucking make it i mean the whole barista thing is a whole nother rant for maybe the next show because i think a lot of mine will be like centered around food <laughs> as they always are weirdly um so yeah i mean there's not really much of a discussion there but what are your two's thoughts on that oh yeah no on we on that to be fair um yeah it's it's bollocks in it have a cup of tea it'll cool you down it's a fucking hot drink how will it cool you down stop it, talking bollocks i've often thought in the summer i'll oh, stick stick a fire on i'll just jump on it yeah it'll cool me down at 100 <laughs> percent with, yeah. It's exactly the same as what I said to you. I, they, they say, oh, I'm going to have a nice hot cup of tea, warm me up. So, in the winter, you don't go, I know, nice and cold, I'll have an ice pole. Yeah, I'll have an ice cream. Yeah. Freezing, I'll have an ice cream, that'll warm me up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right, so we're happy for that. Uh, what we need, to, we need to have a quick discussion about what happens to these. Are they being blown up? Are they uh, being kicked off the planet what, what's the official verdict here well, it's a bit like a, a room 101 for the for the utopia isn't it it's yeah like it's going... i suppose if i've got some sound effects loaded up for next show we can yeah, yeah. Like an yeah. explosion or something yeah. like that what, start you could, what you could do is sort of similar to what you're saying sort of drop them into sort of room 101 but they actually get dropped into the center of the earth yeah and then fuel the planet yeah there yeah. you go yeah right cool right do you want to do a sound effect for that then uh, yeah, yeah, put me on the spot all oh, right and, uh, do a That's them melting and yeah. popping. Yeah. Right. Now it's time for... You're going to dig this, right? We need to do a bit of practice for this as well. Um, it's basically... I've loaded up a little thing. It's called the Listener's Peeves. It's got a little news news theme on it, right? So It's the first one, though, so you are definitely going to fuck this up. Yeah, probably. Right. So let's get the actual bed rolling. Proper, like, oh, well, no. news readers. But we've got just any time we want. Just a little... I told you it's not going to work. It's because I didn't have the fader up. <laughs> yeah. And so now it's round. time for News Round with <laughs> Chunk <laughs> Thor. Right, so we've got this little stab. Oh, wow. Yes, so I was thinking something along the lines of <gasps> listeners, peeves, just straight at it. Boom. There we go. Straight in. Right, there. yeah? Yeah. We're happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really I don't know choice. Can, yeah? yeah, so you've done like, it now. Three, two, one, listeners, peeves. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just like how into it you yeah, get. No, I, Intense. I, I, the thing is, I was practicing this last night, and Amy, my, my partner, <laughs> came out of the bed, bedroom. She was asleep. And she comes and said, can you keep the fucking noise down? What, just sat up I in the studio? I was sat there going, trying to practice the whole, listeners, peeves. And she was just came in and went, what the fuck are you going on about? Obviously, it's all on headphones. She got hero. She just thinks I'm losing the plot in the spare bedroom. Literally, all she, all she can hear is you going, listeners, peeves. No, do you want me to do, oh, do it? Three, two, one. Listeners, peeves. Oh, yeah. I'm locking this. I'm locking this a lot. <laughs> right, okay. Right, so we hit it with the first one then. Let's do it. So the idea is, because we don't want to talk about our shit all the time, we'll get people to message in. Luckily, we've got friends. Yeah, believe no, it or not, no, we've no. got friends who are uh, uh, happy. They've uh, recorded a little messages for us to, for us to discuss. So the first one is our, our good friend Spuggy. So on, the way we do it is we do something along the lines of this. Listeners, peeves. Now then, guys, it's Spuggy. How are we doing this evening? The one thing I want banned is people eating loudly, making a noise, or speaking in the cinema. I mean, we're all there to watch a fucking film, and you're ruining it. I mean, for fuck's sake. Just seriously, just chill your fucking beans, watch the movies. If there's a funny part, yeah, laugh. But talking in it, having your phone go off, or anything like that, it's just fucking dumb. What are you playing at? That is the one thing I want to be banned from this earth. Just sort it out. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't... The majority of it, I agree with 100%. It's annoying. However, the good food, and it, I mean, most of the food that you buy at cinemas is noisy, which is stupid on their behalf. 
but it's good food. It's tasty food. Like, I love a bit of nachos with some cheese, but they are crunchy. Nachos? You are the worst kind of human. Yeah, like, um, our friend, obviously, uh, Bucky, who's in Sorry You're In My Seat podcast, he, um, he said on their show a lot of the times, he's like, I always get nachos every time I go to the cinema, but I have them as a pre-cinema snack. So he'll take him in, he'll like smash them down. Yeah. Then the film comes on. Yeah. I always, I always tend to take things like squashes and stuff, and I know they're a rustly bag. So while the trailers are on, I'll open them so there's plenty of room to get my big oh, old li- sausage fingers in there. <laughs> so like, I can then eat them during the film making minimal impact to everybody L- else's little lives. little packet bowl. Because I'm not a fucking idiot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, thanks for saying I'm the worst human ever. Um, and I do <laughs> get nachos. I love you, really. Yeah, no, you don't. Um, I like you, nachos, I, I just don't like you. I'm just, I've been invited to co-host this show so you can mock me week in, week out. Uh, but no, I take the nachos in, and to be fair, it's not. I don't intentionally eat them all before the film starts. I'm just a fat twat. <laughs> so, to be fair, they are normally gone by the time I finish. Yeah, I often do that with an ice blast. And I've, well, I've learned in, in my, my old age and wisdom to buy another drink as well. Yes. Like I'll get an ice blast and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to smash this. And before the trailers have even come on, especially if I'm there a little bit early, it's gone. It's just it's just that horrible water in the bottom, and I'm not yes. fucking interested. No, I don't um, want that horrible syrup. I did come up with some one thing that I thought would probably work quite well. So if every seat in a cinema had a headphone port and you could put headphones on. Ooh. Noise cancelling headphones, so you can't hear any of the other fuckers. And you're listening to the film through the headphones? Yeah. Like, like a silent disco, but a silent cinema? Yeah. Yeah. That'd oh, be... Okay. Would that not... I know it, like, it's not quite the same suppose... experience and stuff like that, but it, like no. the only thing you're missing out on, if you've got good headphones that have got that full like, immersive that, quality... That would be good... The it would also it would be good for many reasons. One, you can't hear any ev- like everybody else doing all their shit. Two, you can still get surround sound if you get some good, good old headphones. Which yeah. if they're staying in the cinema, you'll get good headphones anyway. Or or grow extra ears. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> and Simple. and three, that would be joyous for the cinema staff because imagine walking into a cinema just to check everyone's all right. Just think, oh, I'll just nip and check in there. And all you can see is loads of people with headphones on. But you know that bit where, like, you'll turn to whoever you with and go, "Oh, it's a good bit that. Yeah, I knew that was coming." Like quietly, but all little beers going, "Yeah, it's a good bit that. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Yeah." Because <laughs> you can't hear each other. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah, but, so, then, but, but then, you, but you wouldn't that wouldn't interrupt film. anyone, though, would it? No, but it just—I'm just saying—it'd be funny for the the staff to watch because if walking, yeah. just check everyone's all right, and all you'd, all you'd have is a cinema of people shouting at each other. Yeah, and it's still not interrupting anyone. Yeah, right. So I think with that, we're not. I don't. I personally think we don't ban it and we don't allow it. We just have all our cinemas have headphones. Yeah, sounds eat good. what the fuck you want. Uh, I like the idea of it. <laughs> Come on, dragons. But for that reason, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drag. I'm not a massive fan of it, to be honest. Right. Okay. So um, are we banning it. I don't. We... I don't think everyone is going to be a fan of sitting there with headphones on for two, two and a half hours how some of these films are going now. Like, I feel that it's... You feel like anything could be going on around you and you're not going to have a clue. You're going to feel a bit... People are going to feel vulnerable. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to get it. It's, it's the first show. I'm not going to take the predatory uh, lane with that. But, okay. That's, that's my <laughs> theory behind it. Should we, should we just say that one's currently going through Parliament? That's uh, it's pending uh, approval. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll come back to you with that one, Spock, because that's a, that's a tough one. Maybe if you send in another message, try and break it down a little bit. What, what exactly think, you want to ban? I think we need some alternatives. Yeah, like you know, if it's just the rustly sweets, or it's just you know certain foods, or just people talking, whatnot. We need. I think we need to break that down a bit. Yeah, because if you got sweets, you can stick them in a tub. No rustling. Yeah. Them sort of things. Yeah, little bum bags given cause... as you come in or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and your then snacks steer in. a zip then, don't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Roadman sweets. <laughs> but yeah, well, uh, you've split us on that one. Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah. Uh, should we go for the next one? Moving on. Do you want to do a uh, listener's peeves? Uh, yeah, go on then. Yeah, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Listener's peeves. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, 
If there was something I wanted to ban, it'd probably be old fucking ladies and them pushing their dogs around in fucking push chairs. Why in the fuck would you push your dog around in a push chair? Let alone dress it up in some fucking outfit. I have no idea why you would do it. It's stupid. It's made for babies. Dogs have four legs. They're supposed to walk. They're not supposed to fuck about in a push chair. I just do not get it. And on the same note, old blokes that sit in their fucking granny trolleys, their granny scooters, and fucking walk their dogs in granny scooters. Why? The fuck are you walking the dog in a granny scooter? The dog is running two two fucking foot behind him. Two fucking foot behind you. And you're fucking zooming down there. You should get out there and get some fucking exercise. Stop being a lazy bastard. I just... I do not understand it. Both of those things. Dogs are pets. Yes. But they're not fucking babies. Stop treating them like them. Thanks for hearing me out. That was the uh, Bryn from uh, the Week Head po- podcast with his thoughts on uh, dogs in prams. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts of that then, Matt? Um, I'm going to shut that down straight away. There's one aspect of it I agree. Don't dress your dog up. It's fucking ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. The other things I'm going to disagree with. The reason why people push dogs around in push chairs is because... The... Is this going to get real deep? No, it's not. <laughs> the dog will be too old or too crippled to go for a walk but why shouldn't it still see the outside world and have a little wonder even though they're not wondering get a bit of fresh air out and see the sights of wherever they live it's just getting them out of the house it's giving them that little bit of yeah. air so I can, I can see a, just a, a, a bead of of tear coming from the inside of your out. It's an emotional is it, is subject. Is this a close? No, it's not. No, not. Do you have at all. a deaf, blind, disabled dog? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that just ran around in circles because it only had two legs. Um, it was no. A so there's a reason why people do that, and again, there's a reason why blokes in their mobility scooters will walk their dog whilst they're in a mobility scooter because yeah. they're disabled they can't walk for long distances <laughs> don't get a dog it's, though to it's be as fair. simple as that no because he's still they're still able to walk them while they're in their mobility scooter yes i agree don't zoom off and leave the dog dragging behind your two foot like go at a sensible speed for whatever dog you've got however there's a reason behind it so for that i don't agree with it <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you're getting real, real aggy. I'm, like, I'm, need, I'm on it. Do you need a couple of minutes to time out? Oh, I might have to. <laughs> I might have to. Right, I've, what do you reckon, I've got Jack? to say the the push chair thing. I I totally agree with. Purely because on the basis that that it isn't an old dog. Purely because I saw someone come to my work ages ago, and his long story short, his car broke down. And he said, oh, "I saw. Right, I'm waiting for the AA. I'll uh, I'll take a dog for a walk." And it was, it was like a little pupper. It wasn't anything really old. It wasn't really young. It was like standard doggo, like. Yeah. And uh, he was like, I'll take the dog for a walk. I was like, Sam, mate, no worries. And then straight away, he, he got the dog out. He then got a push chair out, put the dog in the push chair and fucked off down the road. I thought, if I'd known you was going to do that, I would have I would have charged you extra for your bits, mate. Yeah. Sorry, Matt's just having a problem with his headphones and... Uh... Because the uh, the jacket. All oh, right, yeah, cool story, bro. Um, <laughs> so, what do you reckon then? Um, ban it. Well, we're we 50, can't. We 50, can't. So you're deciding vote, mate. I, I I think I think we should. I think I, I'm cool with the putting him in a buggy. If I, I think we're, I'm happy with this. If the the dog can't walk, like take your dog out with you, and if it's easier, then yeah. Do you know what I mean? But um, I think I think the whole people walk in their dogs with a when they're on a uh, disabled chariot or whatever you call it. Um, it if you're just dragging the dog along, <laughs> like you need to have an assessment. Hire a dog walker. I think is the the thing. I personally think let's get rid of it all and just have free free dog walkers for the elderly. What do you yeah. reckon to that? Yeah, that's that's. Happy. With the second that bit, I can, it. yeah, I can, I can, I can go with that, I suppose. Yeah. On the second one, the first one again, with having the, uh, yeah, having the, having the dog in a in a push chair or something like that, yeah. if the dog is incapable. Yeah. But yeah, with the second one, I suppose I can, I can agree with that. Okay, okay, right. So that's 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 it's essentially banned, but we've come up with an alternative. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sorted. Right, we've got time for one more. Uh, do you want to go for the uh, um, listeners' peeves stab, or do you want me to do it again? Oh, I'll have a go. I'll have a go. Yeah, ready? Three, two, one. Listeners' peeves. Oh, uh, nice little pet peeve for you. Is when you purposely wait a few seconds, right, to hold the door for somebody. And nine times out of ten, it is the older generation you're waiting for. So, somebody our generation, no? They cheers, mate. Cheers, buddy. Give a thumbs up. Give a smile. You know that sort of thing. Older generation, no. They just walk right past you like it's their God-given right. You should hold that door open for them. And they're the same people that preach that you need to respect your elders. Well, I'm sorry, but this day and age, respect is earned. It isn't given. And I think it's about time there was a ban on old people being so rude and obnoxious to the young generation. We are the future of the country. It's still about time they just submit it to themselves. Well, so that was uh, Reese there, one of our mates. Um, pretty aggy about old people yet again. <laughs> old people <laughs> are getting a hard time. Um, also, week. I'd just like to say, th- uh, we're all right, Reese. Thanks for asking. <laughs> like Everybody else has been like, oh, guys, you're all right, Reese. I was like, right, pet peeve for you. Let's have it. I fucking hate old people. <laughs> um, I mean, I think with that, um, I don't think it's necessarily old people. I think it's just people who like can't understand like can't be thankful for people being like courteous yeah I get that but I think what Reese is getting at is and I've experienced it myself and he's probably stolen one of my future pet peeves to be fair um, is yeah old people that feel that they're entitled just because they're not dead yet because they yeah. because they <laughs> yeah. managed not to die they feel that they're entitled to respect like Reese said respect is earned and you don't earn it just by not dying after 70 years or however long <laughs> Like there are yeah. a lot of old people out there that just think because they're old, they're entitled to a shit ton of respect, and they can disrespect you. Yeah, there's probably, absolutely not. There's probably a cunt for most of life. Yeah, an absolute dickhead. But they're like, no, well, I'm old. I'm I'm not dead. So, like, respect be, be me. my pal. Yeah, um, respect so, is a two-way street, pal. Yeah, I think that especially in this day and age, like I've I've had that before, like. Just because you like, where, where do you draw the line? Like, if someone's five years older than me, they've got to earn my respect. But if they're forty years older, then they get it automatically. It doesn't make sense. Does no, it? it's not happening. No, so, I mean, right. I'm going to stick with my fellow Ginger. Yeah, and uh, I'm sticking with Reese all the way. Straight off the bat. Yeah, done. I'm, I'm there. I'm with him. Right. I'm on it. Okie dokie. I agree. Yeah. Sweet. Right. So that was the end of this week's one, two, three. Listeners peeves. Right, so basically now we've got a new section. Well, I say new section. It's a new section of this show. Like <laughs> it's, it's all new. Yeah, it's, it's first, all new. First show, mate. Um, this is this section is called show and tell. Um, so it's all about bringing in an item to uh, to the show. One of us will do it each week, and uh, what we'll do is we'll convince the others that this has to be allowed in Utopia. Um, I was thinking, what what sort of sound bed do we need for this sort of um, this sort of section? And I was thinking, we need to take ourselves off to like some sort of like the utopian bazaar, like the little <laughs> market that's got right, yeah. that's there. So what I've come up with is this little this little little jingle, a little umpa oh, band yeah. playing on the. Uh, Little bandstand there. I like it. Let's go everyone rustling the U- around selling their wares. You know yeah. what I mean? Some, some bloke selling pots and uh, yeah, dream selling, catchers and shit like that. Another bloke <laughs> selling some weird type of bread that you're not really sure what's in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've probably got on like, it. some sort of like Egyptian market where everyone's yeah. wearing like, robes. Yeah, and loads of rugs edge- everywhere for yeah. sale. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've Magic got, carpet. I'm just, what, I'm just, I'm just, you're there. Imag- I'm just you're imagining there. Aladdin. Yeah. <laughs> More to the point, people have spent two days travelling from distant worlds yeah, to all come over and, the galaxy. Come and be allowed to sell their wares at this market. So this is like, I was thinking we could have it so that like what we bring in is our almost, it's like the import. And we're like, this bloke comes up and he goes, right, I'm selling this. And we go, you, sir, are allowed in. Do you know why? Because we're not part of the fucking EU. 
We'll trade to anyone we like. Oh. Yeah. Don't get political. Don't get, uh, we're all about having a laugh. We're not talking about Brexit. <laughs> I prefer Shreddies or Weetabix. I'm not a big fan of Brexit. But <laughs> Wheatos is yeah. what I call it. Right, so, so let's uh, let's get into it. Um, basically, we was just having a chat about what it could be, and I suggested this, and me and Jack both want it in. So the deciding vote goes down to Matthew, and he hadn't tried it. What it is, is... Jack, would you like to read the packet for us? I can read the packet. I'll give you a good old intro. So, this is from the the distant lands of Asda in North Highcombe. And uh, it's, it's from a guy called Jack Link's Meat Snacks. Um, <laughs> we've got the original flavour here. Personally, I think the honey glazed is better. Uh, but we've got original flavour, 100% lean beef, beef jerky. We're not sponsored by them yet. Other beef jerky is available. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right, so Jack, would you like to uh, hold up the package so of the mic and open it there? And Matthew's going to try it live on air. Let's see if we can hear this uh, wonderful tear, even though it is, I think, the quietest opening <laughs> packet I've ever heard. Rustle it a little bit, mate. Rustle it a little bit. They're the sort of there packet. We go. There we go. They're the sort of packet you need to take to the cinema, mate, because they're yes. not very loud, yeah. are they? Yes, that's, that's a callback. That's what they call a callback. There you Jack. go, yeah. Spug. So we'll try it. We'll open it up, Jack. Let's have a look. That's, a little oh, bit. I've got a little waft of beef there. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a bit... Oh, I'm, like I'm anxious. I'm a bit intrigued. Should we, yeah, should yeah, we find you a nice square? Man. Nice, nice bit there for... I don't want to eat the, uh, the absorbent packet, because that'll not do you, if you can, If you can eat away from the microphone, that'll oh, be good. We're not that, doing mate. that AMPR. Do you laughing box around that? Right, what, what's, the first, um, what's the first... What's the first... First thoughts? Yeah, come on. It's, why is it red? <laughs> it's red meat, son. Red meat. Yeah, no, but like... Beef ain't normally that colour. Oh, it's red meat, son. It's good it's, for you, that. Get it down, you. to the light, you can see your finger through it. <laughs> it's it's dr- a bit odd. It's, it's dried. Dried it. meat. Granted, the honey one is what's better. The, what's the smell like? What's the smell like? <laughs> a bit beefy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> beefy, <laughs> it's weird. Right. Sweet, 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 yeah. Yeah. It almost looks like a jelly sweet. Right, okay. I'm a bit in... Ooh, I don't know. Is there anywhere in case that like it? Um, spit it yeah, that, that bin over there. Brilliant. Right, here we go, then. Right, and it's going in. Need a good old oh. chew. It's good. Give you meat a good old chew. <laughs> Give you meat a good old chew. How's I'm that meat in your mouth? How's that feeling? All right, mine a bit of meat in my mouth. Um, do you know what? It's all right. Um, <laughs> and that concludes this part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, what is in the packet? Oh, it's um, silica gel. Don't worry about that. It just absorbs all the moisture. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Uh, um, we'll get to don't the eat that bit. It'll be parched. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost. <laughs> Amazing. It's nice when they throw in a free meal. It's like you get them when you buy microwaves. It's like, oh, they got a free meal in the microwave. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, it's not something I'd go to. It wouldn't be my go to snack. Maybe a training snack? Yeah, I mean, high in protein. Me and Jack went to the gym. Because, yeah, you know, once. I had to mention it. Because yeah. uh, went to the gym before the show. Because we are actually. It because if you don't mention it. It, technically, you haven't gone to the gym. Yeah. Um, if, if you didn't Instagram it, did it even happen? Exactly. Now, yeah, no, uh, it's all right. Um, I'm still a bit undecided on it, I think. Oh, like, don't play this. We, we, we've had one, like, 50-50. We need a decision. Yeah. Um, it's almost a bit like Pepper Army, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Um, but not as good. Well, oh, why? Well, um... I prefer Pepper Army to a beef jerky. Do you know what? I can I can accept it. Yeah. I'm... Um, if, would it, if worse comes to me, if it, I had to, I'd eat it again. Yeah. Would it um, help if I described the quality and tradition that's on the back of this packet? If you want to, go for it, yeah. yeah. So this is how you, you're wandering around the market and you hear a, hear a guy wailing. And he says, <laughs> Come get your beef jerky! Says, Over a hundred years ago, my great-grandparents settled in the north woods of Wisconsin bringing with them treasured family recipes and an adventurous spirit. My family is still here in northern Wisconsin, or Utopia, as they actually <laughs> are now. I say we don't have Wisconsin yeah. and Utopia. Uh, taking pride in the quality products we made from those same time-honored recipes. So go ahead, try our snacks. My name on the package is my personal guarantee of your satisfaction. Enjoy. That was a phenomenal impression of Jack Link. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I also thought a uh, tagline for Utopia: we, we don't have Wisconsin, but we'll have Yukonsin. <laughs> wow. God, yeah, I'm all over that. 
Yeah. 100%. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, so that's in then, is it? Yeah, I'm going to set beef jerky in. Sweet. Hopefully the other shows will have better things to talk about. Than beef jerky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and we should also get a little, uh, I, mean, I think we should get a little sound effect for when something gets accepted yes. or rejected. From yeah, Utopia. like a ding or a ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, beef jerky's in. Beef jerky is in. Sweet. Right, so uh, we're moving on to the next section of the show. Um, moving swiftly moving on. Swiftly on. Right, so the next one is uh, a little thing that we're calling alternative oh. options. And basically, that's where I give something that... when It's a kind of a 50-50 thing, and the boys have got to come up with an alternative version. This... This show, we've gone with the happy birthday song because we've all decided we're sick of that shit. <laughs> like, yeah. it's the same thing every year, every birthday. Let's mix it up a bit. It's not coming into Utopia, but we need something yeah. for when people have a birthday. Instead of exactly. It. So, I mean, like, it's just an awkward song, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's just an awkward song. You sit there, people are singing happy birthday. What do you do while they're singing it to you? It's not a pleasant song to sing because it's just awkward and horrible. Yeah. And I don't think I've met anyone that's ever got the pitch right. No. <laughs> um, but what, what? again, I've come up with a, a, a little theme tune. <laughs> um, I need to, um, I don't actually, can't actually remember how this goes. So I'm going to gonna wing it quite a bit, really. Um, but let's give it a go. <laughs> Alternative options. Alternative options. Alternative op- options. Alternative options. Alternative options. That's the piano end there for me. Oh, that, that was almost as awkward as the happy birthday song. I know, the vocals <laughs> on that were horrendous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. Well, we could always, <laughs> always work on it. Do you know what I mean? Um, right, so, yeah. Um, basically... Um, We've already described this bit, so we don't really need the music bed, but we can talk for a minute <laughs> if you yeah, want. Just a, um, so it. we don't like it, we're going to replace it. Um, we've uh, flipped a coin at the start of the show, and uh, Matthew's going to go first. Um, so, Matthew, um, do you want to talk about yours first, or do you want to just jump straight in it? Um, and... Yeah, it's, well, as, as much description as I can. Um, so, the song, the music that I've used, uh, some people probably won't have heard of it, it's... Um, the Funky Gibbon. The what? No, no karaoke versions are available, unfortunately. No. Either are they? No, because it's such a weird... It's got... Um, what's his name from Spring Watch in it? Um, Bill Oddie. <laughs> Bill Oddie, that's the one. Has it really? He's, he's in it, it really? from, from his younger days. And there's, uh, yeah, three blokes. I think one of them was in uh, the original Willy Wonka film as well. How I remember that, I don't know. Um, and, yeah, I've used their music... And I'm actually a little bit petrified right. about uh, singing the lyrics. Um, um, and I literally <laughs> threw the lyrics together in about 10 minutes yeah. the other night. So. Um, just to interject ever so slightly, it's probably something we should have mentioned just before. Just a little challenge for anybody out there. Um, the traditional Happy Birthday song that after this section we won't ever talk about again. In your own time, just try and sing it, but try and start it as high as you possibly can <laughs> because it is brilliant when you get to the middle part because it only gets higher <laughs> yeah um but yeah that's a little challenge for everybody at home um matthew are you uh, you ready or do you want you know want a little minute to wet your whistle do you want to have a little bit of a i think i'm all right key, it's just um it's um, just a bit of a vocal warm-up or? it's la 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 wow phenomenal i can actually uh hold a tune but obviously just not yeah warm yeah up. Um, I was just hope that I remember the tune to it. To be fair, and yeah, don't absolutely butcher this phenomenal half right. birthday song. Okie dokie. Are you ready? Give us your best, man. Know. Are you ready to roll with this? I think so. But just as for the listeners, as Chunk said, there's no karaoke version to this song, so yeah. he's had to get one with the quietest vocals on possible, and I'm just going to try and sing over the top of them. <laughs> try and ignore them. <laughs> yeah, which is going to throw me a bit, but it's also going to hopefully keep me uh, to the right tune. So, right. You're, trying, so you're going to sing over Bill Oddie. Yeah. How dare you? I know. Like, what a thing. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm about to sing over the top of Bill Oddie. I'm Never sure, thought I'd do it. I'm sure that was on your bucket list. It was. <laughs> Duet with Bill Oddie, <laughs> where I just sing over him anyway. I need to make sure my headset's working. Is your headphones working? Oh, uh, there's the bed if you 
it is, it is playing. Can you hear it there? It's just a bit. This is great, great show. This is. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. I'll do. I can hear it just about. Yeah. Right. Right. I'll oh. bring that down. Are you ready, Matthew? As, as ready as I'm ever going to be. Ready? I think. Right. Let's roll then. With the what is it? The the funky birthday. Is that what we're calling it? Have, um, a, have a funky birthday? Yeah, well, why not? I'm going to say there is swearing in it, so it's not for all ages. You wouldn't <laughs> sing at a kid's birthday party. It's utopia, and, mate. And, Swearing's allowed. And generally, it's sort of aimed at <laughs> taking the piss out of old people. Old people are getting a very hard time of it yes, on this week's show. Apparently, we do not like them. I um, think next show, we will be banning old people. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. But yeah, no, it's basically a massive piss take out of old people because uh, people moan about getting old, obviously, on the birthdays, don't they? So it's just sort of going for that. So uh, run the track. Yeah, run why the not? track. No, oh, here we go. Oh, we're gonna have to start it again. I was, ex- I was, I was expecting a little uh, bit at the start, <laughs> but I didn't quite get it. We were expecting the vocals to come in. Come on, everybody! It's birthday time. <laughs> Here we go. It's your birthday. Let's celebrate. You're getting old. Let's eat some cake. I know the year has come and gone. You'll be dead before too long. Hearing aids are coming soon. The aches and pains. Oh, oh, oh. Bass. Happy birthday to you. You are old as fuck right now. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Here's some cake before it's late. Blow the candles out. You can stop it there. I mean, there's a little bit more, but <laughs> I think I'll do a. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, mean I'm, I'm I'm feeling it. I'm, I mean, I'm there's really a bit more. I mean, it. I can I can talk over the lyrics for the next bit. There's um, you are getting wrinkles. Your brain is getting simple. Your family's going to put you in a home. <laughs> right, okay. But, wow, your, but, wow. <laughs> but your family loves you, so get a drink and have a few. Let's get drunk, you little punk. So so much we're going to spew. And then back to the chorus again of um, happy birthday to your oldest fuck right now. I, I, I appreciate the effort you've put in, mate. I, I mean, I really now do. I've actually done it and performed it, yeah, I'm quite impressed with myself. I think it should be a thing that you do at every birthday now. Yeah. And I, I will probably request it at mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, the, the, uh, you know, we'll have a birthday bash, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll give it a go. Yeah. I'll turn it off to you, that was, that was, that was brilliant. Yeah, um, right, I suppose we best here, contender number two. Um, contender ready. <laughs> yeah. So um, top that, mate. Uh, top that, Jack. I don't. I don't. I mean, I've obviously heard. Well, known about what you're both doing. Um, I think we yours. I don't think we need an in, in, intro. I mean, I know for a fact you've been hard practicing. Yeah, yeah. So if you fuck it up, I'm not gonna be impressed with you. No, there's. I don't think there's any chance of it. I think just as a quick description. That's um, the happy birthday p- song pisses me off so much. I just thought, well, why don't you j- just say happy birthday? Yeah. Um, so I've written this little little ditty. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it gets the point across. It's easy for people to remember. Combining two things people love, saying happy birthday, and a nice little jingle. Yeah. Smash that together. This what is you got? What we got. Yeah, oh, sweet. Yeah. Right. So you ready for me to run the track? Yeah, run the track. Right. Let's have a have a listen to this then, shall we? Oh, hello. <laughs> Big fan. No, no, no lyrics yet? No, I, no hang on. Okay, wait, okay, wait. no. It's a build up. Right, okay. Intense. Ready? Ready? For it? Over there. Wait for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, happy birthday. 
<laughs> wow. Oh, I've got a lot of time for that. I mean, I was, I absolutely loved mine. I mean, I was quite impressed with mine. But I just... I if, thought yours was better, but actually doing it, I, I, I'd prefer that. I loved mine, and I thought I was in for a winner then. But I'm, my confidence is shook. I've got to admit, I'm, I'm torn. Oh, I'm absolutely I'm torn. shook here. I'm Just... torn. This is like, oh, it's like the most intense boxing match I've ever known. <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought Jack was down and out, honestly. And then and then actually hearing it, I thought, you know, it, you know what? He might make a comeback. The, the build-up proper comes, <laughs> doesn't it? And you think, go on, go on, go on. That's, that's, that's the only birthday. happy birthday song I've ever, like, enjoyed. <laughs> yeah. Like, everybody feels happier. <laughs> Can I just make a slight <laughs> argument for mine? Yeah. You don't have to wait five minutes before yes. you, you get wished happy no, birthday. No, it's not waiting for five minutes. That that is the joy of it. However, you just mine get a nice, is, joyous tune. But Man. then an argument for yours is mine is abusive. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> As jacks can be used at all ages, all, all birthday parties. Um, yeah, maybe um, we can have both depending on how old the person is. Yeah. But then what's the point in this? Uh, I suppose we do have like obviously in the real world we have the happy birthday song and then we have like Stevie Wonder's Stevie Wonders, happy which birthday is the better one. So yeah. So what about if? Oh, but I need to crown a winner, really, don't I? You've got to crown a winner. I've got to crown a winner in this first episode. Um, I think I'm gonna have to give it to Jack. No. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, do you know what? It's amazing because it's a bit of like hard fun. Oh, I am still genuinely good. I can you see are it. fuming. I'm, 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 you know, you boys know how competitive I, I am. I don't like losing. I put effort into that. Like I said, it took me a good, a good long ten minutes to write those lyrics. I did. I mean, more for the fact that you've written actual lyrics to an actual <laughs> song, and I can guarantee you've been sat in your bedroom practicing. <laughs> and I've just gone. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I felt bad when you said, oh, I've sent, oh, I've got these lyrics, I've got this song, and Jack went, right, uh, there's tequila. I'm just going to say happy birthday to tequila. And I was like, sound. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Amazing. Like, to be fair, even if I knew that's what Jack was going to do, I, don't, I wouldn't have been able to... I mean, that... You can't top it, because it's the greatest happy birthday song. <laughs> That's I'll give, it. I'll give it to you. I'll if give you it to you. Yeah, shake known, hands. Come I on. I guarantee what you'd have done. If you'd have known, you'd have gone. I'm not even going to bother. So yeah. that. <laughs> I'm. I'm disappointed that mine hasn't won and it's not been picked for Utopia. However, it's been it's been done. It's out there on the podcast for the world to hear. That's and hopefully, it. in the real world, it might get adopted somewhere. Fingers crossed. It Defin- may not be definitely in, Utopia. in my life. Um. Right, so do you, do you all know the lyrics to the theme tune to this part. So are we all going to join in for the this is the alternative option and then I just cap off this little section? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm certainly trying right, my best. Yeah. Right, are you ready then, boys? Give us your alternative option. Give us your alternative option. Give us your alternative Option. Alternative options. I completely lost that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah that's good. Cheers yeah. for joining in there, yeah. Jack. To be fair, right. I didn't really know what I was doing until right at the end. <laughs> I bottled it. Yeah, you did. You yeah. choked. Did the eight mile. I, I used to pour more confidence in my knees birthday week. You did, mate, yeah. You choked, mate. You, like I said, he eight miled it. Knees weak. Palms are sweaty. Arm spaghetti. Mum spaghetti. Swear. Spaghetti, spaghetti. Mum, spaghetti. Yeah, right. Anyway, moving on, gents. Um, right, um, we thought a lot of this show is going to be based around sort of everybody getting pissed off, moaning and whinging and all that sort of stuff. And we thought, what do, what can we do to to bump up the positivity within it? And um, basically, um, we thought, we're all too grumpy and mardy to just be like, this is what's made me happy this week. Because nine times out of ten... We're usually fucking mardy and yep. pissed off about something. So we've said, right, right, we'll put it out and we'll we'll have a look for a positive story and hopefully at the end of it we'll all feel refreshed. Yeah. And I've got um, somewhere Just here... Very I... quickly before you do that, I mean, like, we are miserable at times and good things do happen to us that we could bring to the show. It's just the fact that no one else would give a fuck what happens to us, will they? No. So uh, we've scoured the... The width and breadth of if the I'm, country. If I'm honest, Matt, I don't give a fuck what happens to you, so I'm pretty sure them lot won't. Oh, and that's coming from one of my best pals. If yeah. it makes you feel better, it's the same with Chunk. It's the same with Chunk. 
Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I, I don't. You'd be like, yeah, this made me happy. It'd just be another one of them stories that people fucking lure me into. Yeah. Oh, and the thing oh, is, um, interesting. The thing is, it, it might have made you happy, mate, but oh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, you're happy, I'm not. Like, are you rubbing my nose in it? I mean, <laughs> I find it hard to believe, boys, because I've had some pretty good stuff happen in the last week, and you both attended. I mean, we won't go into it, because yeah. evidently no one gives a fuck, but yeah. you both attended, so you both care. Well, that bird you think blasted? And that's all, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that did not happen. Um, Why well, have you gone red, Matthew? <laughs> I'm ginger, right. it happens. Right, anyway, um, yeah, so... Um, Obviously, when you're ready, I'll uh, fire this track off properly in the, in the background of it. And uh, hopefully, me and Jack can just close our eyes and just feel your warm breath against oh, our I won't, against I won't our uh, won't necks. It up quite and, like, um, I don't think I'll do it justice, no. but it's, it is quite a nice story, <laughs> right. so I'm ready when you are. Okay, then. Right, let's go. So, um, I've, I've, I've noticed on, uh, on the internet the other day, I read a story. Um, and it's basically about a shoebox full of love letters um, between a courting couple um, have finally been returned um, back to the owner after 70 years. Um, so what it is, there was a lady called Kim. She was sorting through her attic and she rediscovered the letters um, that were sent back in 1948 and 1949 between a Norma Hall in Kent and a Bob Beasley in the British armies um, overseas. Um, Kim's mum had taken the letters some 20 years ago from a neighbour in Aldershot. Um, the neighbour had discovered them and was planning on throwing them away. Um, Kim's mother, um, Cherry, um, took the box, took a look and realised um, what they were. And She just did not want to get them dumped and get them out of the way. Um, they moved to Somerset, took the letters with her. <coughs> Um, but she never got the opportunity to find Norma and Bob, um, unfortunately, before before Terry passed in 2016. Um, but when Kim, her daughter, came across the letters again recently, um, she felt it was important to find the couple and return the memories to them before it was too late. Um, she read a couple of them just for informational purposes, um, but left the rest because she felt that they were private. Um, Kim posted pictures of the envelope on Facebook telling friends the only clues that she had um, about Bob being in the forces and normal living in Kent um, telling them that they were sent when they were and uh, Facebook did its stuff as it does the social media gets a lot of bad press but it came through quite nicely um, Kim had absolutely no idea that her post would lead to 11,000 shares and 1,500 reactions well, um, but most importantly it came up with an address um, one of Kim's friends on Facebook did some digging and uh, told her the couple appeared to have got married in 1951 in Uxbridge. Um, his name, Howard R. Beasley, so maybe a Robert, which led to Bob. Um, and uh, yeah, so Kim sent a letter to the address hoping it was the right family, explaining that she had temporary ownership of the letters and she wanted to get them back to the rightful owners. Um, Norma Beasley had indeed been an 18 year old woman who met Bob in, uh, on the Woolwich Ferry in 1940s and impressed by his banter they started out as friends before the relationship eventually developed into a long time love. Now aged 88 and living here in Lincoln she had no idea that the letters that the sweethearts had written while she was living at her parents home and Bob was on military service overseas were actually even still in existence. Um, she was shocked when she received Kim's letters, especially as Bob unfortunately had died back in December last year, so not too long ago. She uh, very quickly wrote back to Kim, absolutely delighted that the letters were coming home, and astonished that they were still actually in the original shoebox that Norma would put them in to safekeep them. Um, so the letters were returned home after, after 40 years, and another nice thing that came from it is that Norma and Kim are still in contact. Um, they talk on the phone and they also write letters to each other. Um, however, um, although she is pleased that the letters are back in her possession, she admitted that she can't yet face opening the envelopes and the love notes without Bob being there. Um, like she said, they're still in the original wrappings um, that she put them in and she just can't read them yet. Um, that's a pretty sweet story, that it? it is. It's, right. it is it's, it's lovely t- 
to, to see that people still care enough to do that. Yeah. To make the effort um, after 40 years. Like like Nora said, she didn't even realise that it was still in existence. Yeah. Um, so what an amazing surprise that would have been, especially when unfortunately she lost she lost Bob a few months earlier. Yeah. Um, I so mean, it was it was really nice. I um, mean, I'm, I get I get quite excited if I like remember something that's been in the loft for 10 years. Yeah. You know, like something like that must be like just mind blowing, really. Beautiful, eh? Brought a tear to my glass eye. Did it, mate? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's uh, the feel good story. Yeah, that I sweet. Found online. We've probably allowed a bit more time than we should have done for that. I mean, there's nothing really to expand on that, but I think just a bit more positivity and friendliness within the world. That's something we'll promote in utopia, so just to speak, really, won't it? G- general theme of no matter how shit it might seem, it's actually not that bad. No. Exactly, and it's, feel... it's something to take is that Kim added as well on one of the Facebook posts about it is that there is a message there um, in this age of electronic communication write to your loved one on paper snail mail, it may take a while but just do it once in a while because it's something that could be kept potentially forever if you do look after them well enough, so in this world that's absolutely dominated by technology, every now and then just write them a little letter, yeah you know, if you don't live particularly close just to them, send them a letter. It's something yeah. nice and nostalgic that you can do that can be held on to because a text message or a message on Facebook will soon be lost or forgotten or deleted. Yeah. Whereas a letter is something there in hand that you can actually write. Something you can physical. Read. Yeah, yeah, exactly, rather than just looking onto your phone or your tablet. Um, so, yeah, I would absolutely agree. Write your loved ones from time to time. Yeah. On paper. Yeah. That's uh, choked me up a little bit, I think. Mm. Like, that's, that's nice. So that's uh, right in the feels. Yeah, so that's the uh, the end of uh, of the, that part of the show, and uh, the best uh, just move on then. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so the uh, next part of the show is a battle royale, and I've got, as per usual, a nice fancy uh, bed for it. Um, let me just find it. Right, there we go. Right, are you ready for this, boys? Nice uh, battleground to uh, get us going. Ooh, sounds intense. Builds up. Um, yeah. I so like it. We're on the, uh, I don't know, in the uh, Thunderdome of, uh, <laughs> of the Utopia. Contest of champions. Yeah. I Thunderdome, I can't yeah, like that. Mad Max reference there, mate, for you. Um, but basically, um, the idea is that um, I think this is going to build up and be really mad out of nowhere. But um, <laughs> uh, the idea is that uh, each of you two uh, bring to the table a celebrity or a person from history, maybe, or something like that, someone well known, and uh, we pitch them uh, against each other. And basically, I decide which one goes into our utopian hall of fame um the other one is unfortunately like everything else in this show cast into the the, the pit of a volcano and disintegrated and never to be seen again the never-ending but, furnace of the core of the earth yes let me but, just take a minute just to acknowledge this sound better it's yeah just, i'm proper getting into yeah, this. yeah you're getting your Getting ready for battle, boys? I reckon I'm going to borrow this for the gym. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to kick you away, boy. Oh, bring it, boy. Um, but basically, um, yeah, the idea is that it's almost like a top trump, so we'll probably work out some sort of ranking system eventually for the show. Um, but, uh, yeah, the person who loses can never be brought back to the table and will never, ever get access. So you've both got to think about who you bring in. So, uh Actually, we never flipped a coin for this, so you should flip a coin now and yeah. see who wants to go first. I'm Delia Smith, this. Where are you? <laughs> Let's be happy with you. Who's calling it in the air? Right, who's calling it? Matt, you, call, you want to flip a coin and see who calls it? Yeah, flip it. I'll call it in the air. Right, ready? Three, two, one. Heads. It is. Music's dropped there, isn't it? It's tails. It's tails. So, your choice. I'll go first. Oh, okay, okay. I oh, mean, I've, 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 I've brought I've brought a big dog to the table. Yeah? I've brought a big dog to the table. I'm feeling oh, confident. Wow. That is confident. I've got some facts written down. I've got some facts as well. Um, I'm feeling confident, but then again, I don't know who you've got, so lay it on me. Right. Well, yeah. how, how do you guys want to do this? Do you want to have like a minute each to do like an elevator pitch <coughs> and then have a discussion afterwards? or? Uh, I think start with... I think just general 
pitch them both for discussion. Yeah? Yeah. Right, okay then, Jack. Well, uh, if you want to uh, take it from... Uh, yeah. yeah, go for it, bro. The man I'm bringing to the table, and it is a man. Imagine if we both put the same person. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be all good, wouldn't it? Should have probably checked this for Chunk first. Go on. Yeah. So the, the man I'm bringing into the Thunderdome, you need to welcome him, else he'll kick the shit out of you. It is the one, the only, the notorious... Conor McGregor. Oh, he's okay. gone there. Okay, yeah, he's gone for I've a gone fighter. Oh. Gone for a fighter. So even if you win, <laughs> he's my guy's going to kick shit out of you before he goes. You'll be Norton. You'll be yeah. Norton. So, I mean, the points he's got going for him, for him, for him, he was the champion of two, maybe three weight classes. <laughs> I think it was two at the same time. It was two. Done, done your research, mate, yeah. Yeah. I wikipedia it about five minutes ago. Um, <laughs> he come from nothing. Norton. He come from absolutely nothing. He did, he did. And, um, I mean, he's Irish, so that makes everything he says funny. Uh, he had the fastest title fight win in UFC history. 13 seconds, I believe. Yeah, it was. Um, he's got his own whiskey company. I'm a fan of whiskey, <laughs> so I'm a fan of this guy. <laughs> and I was that and a- if you weren't, he'd kick your head in. <laughs> I-, I was actually talking to him earlier because me and him are friends, and he did tell me that you're a little bitch. <laughs> but just before that, I said, "I'll go bring it to the table. We're going up against the big man, Matt Heaton." And do you know what his response was? What was it? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I'd just like to point out, you're not friends with him. You weren't talking to him earlier. I mean... But I... proceed. Well, I'm going to be honest, that's all I've got. Amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Sweet. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, I mean, he's, yeah, he's strong. Sick. Strong out of the gates. Yeah. Right, Boom. okay. Beat that bitch. Right. I think what we should do for future reference is um, be given a category. Of someone yeah. to bring to the table. Right, okay, yeah. Because the person be. I've brought it's completely, completely different. different. Right, okay. They're not a fighter <laughs> in the slightest. Okay. So we should have categories, but for this time, we'll roll with it. Yeah. Go for it then, mate. So, the man that I'm bringing to the table. It is a man. He's not a fighter, but it is the legend that is Tom Hanks. Ooh. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks versus Conor McGregor. Wow. Two-time Oscar winner, four-time Academy Awards winner, eight-time Emmy winner, four-time Global Global uh, Golden Globe winner. Global Global. Yeah. <laughs> two-time. Love a Global Globe. Two-time Screen Actors Guild winner, Tom Hanks. What a legend that man is. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I think I've been rumbled. I, I think you have. I mean, Conor McGregor. I think if you put Conor McGregor to, yet again is going to lose. I honestly think if you put them two in in a ring. Conor McGregor wouldn't want to fight him because he's too much of a lovely fucking bloke. Exactly, and there that is the sort of people. Pe- that's the sort of people. Good that's, England. That is the sort of people. That's the sort of person that I think we we want in Utopia. Yeah, upstanding citizen. Absolutely. I mean, you'll you'll fight my corner for me here, but as an example, we'll go through. Um, 152 nominations for his acting. He's related somehow to Abraham Lincoln. He's the third cousin, fourth time removed, however Whoa. you word it, to Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> the big Abe. Yeah. He's Everyone grossed, knows how much of a good bloke he was. Yeah, his films have grossed $4.9 million at box office. Is that Abraham Lincoln or Tom Hanks? No, this is Tom, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. This is Tom Hanks. <laughs> Tom Hanks. <laughs> Tom, Tom Hanks. Tom, Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. <laughs> the legend that is Tom <laughs> Hanks. <laughs> he created, directed, and produced Band of Brothers. What a TV series that is. He starred in films like Toy Story. Yeah. Sully. Saving Private Ryan. Saving Mr. Banks. Polar Express. The Terminal. Catch Me If You Can. Castaway. Green Mile. Big. Was he in the adult version of that one, that um, Shaving Ryan's Privates? I don't think he was, mate, because oh. he's too much of a stand-up guy to be Ooh. doing those sort of sleazy films. Oh, he's going to come at me with that shit? I'm coming at you with that, mate. I mean, to be fair, I don't feel like I need to argue anymore. No. Tom Hanks is there. I'm doing it. Boom. Mic drop. Tom yeah. Hanks, the legend that is. I reckon he tops right. Conor McGregor I, every day I of the week. I think we definitely need categories of future, but I, I feel I can confirm that Tom Hanks 
Unfortunately, Jack has taken it. Yo, yo. I'm, I'm gonna get, put it there, mate. I'm, I'll gear that one. That was that was a a worthy winner. I'm I mean, I'm I'm happy. Yeah. Because Tom Hanks is a legend. I feel like he's, that was, he, Tom Hanks is welcome and is in Utopia. I feel like that was an was an easy win. But yeah. again, I do think we're doing the categories. But like I said, I'm happy that Tom Hanks is with us in Utopia. Yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed because I do like Conor McGregor. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I mean, it didn't help that you've picked him at a time where he's in the news for punching a guy in a pub. Yeah. While he's been out on the piss. Mm, I mean, so probably not the best timing in the world. This yeah. Is news. And he's not exactly at the top of his game, is he? Yeah. This is news to me. I mean, did he punch Bojo or something? No, he. it was just a guy that was probably in his 50s or 60s sat in a pub. Um, Even I want Tom Hanks now. And, uh, and you, know, you know what I think about Conor McGregor? Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I like. I do like Conor McGregor. He's made some mistakes. He's a cracking fighter, but um, he's no much for Tom Hanks, is he? So, not at all. No. And I think to be fair, mate. I think you'd have had me if you'd just gone. Tom Hanks, Castaway, Toy Story. Yeah. And I'd have gone. Yeah, he wins. I think but that, I didn't. that dead genuinely would have been... Yeah, but I did my research. <laughs> yeah. He's won all them awards. Hats off. You put almost as much effort into that as you did the uh, Happy Birthday Alternative. Except this yeah. time actually won. Yes. Yes, well yeah. done. Can you well imagine, though, if he'd have come up with Tom Hanks and I'd have come up with Wilson from Castaway? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, mate, that is, that is probably a battle royale. <laughs> yeah, right? that would be. I was amazed that when I, when I did a bit of research about 10 minutes before the show... Um, He's related to Abraham Lincoln. Like, yeah, that, that, that's yeah. the next level, really, isn't it? That's weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's it? weird. I mean, it's nothing to do with us, because we're not American. But, like, yeah, he's yeah. up there. Sweet. Right, so that actually brings us on to the, the, like, the wrapping up the show. Um, Short and sweet. Yeah. So we're just Short and sweet. Aaron, our later. Intro, outro. Uh, Back to Austin Powers. Music. Powers. Um, it sounds like it's going to go. It sounds like the start yeah, yeah. of Austin Powers. It's like getting into a swanky hotel's oh, lift. Oh, no. And... I'll tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> what? This is the fucking Sims, isn't it? Yeah. yeah Ironically, it is, it? we're creating a world. Yeah. Oh, mate. Everything everything yeah. just falls into place. That no, is phenomenal. It? Yeah. Exactly put in the this... cheap... It's all like, I feel like this is the music. Like I feel like there's a shuttle bus, I don't know, somewhere like really shitty. Like a hole. <laughs> Like, <laughs> you get in, and you just go, right, come on, let's go. And this is the music that's playing. Well, you're yeah. just waiting for the yeah. short journey to Utopia. Getting yeah. on the bus at Grimsby. Yeah. I mean, Grim's in the name. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the cheat code to put in for, like, millions of dollars? It's, called, it's Motherload, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Or Rosebud. Or Rosebud. Rosebud was one Anyway, we're getting yeah, slightly we, off we topic. Yeah, we digress. Um, so, yeah, what, uh, uh, what's your thoughts and feelings been on the, the pilot episode, guys? I think it's gone well. Um, a few I like more turtles. Sound- <laughs> you like turtles? <laughs> I like turtles. Um, a few more sound effects, but uh, yeah. for, a f- for a first blast, yeah. I think it's swimming. It's, it's right. flown by, to be fair, yeah. for an hour and a half. Try yeah. and, uh, and try and uh, hopefully, been enjoyable. We've, hopefully yeah. we've kept the listeners entertained. Yeah. Do comment, let us know, email us, send us a fax, or. <laughs> Um. <laughs> I can just confirm that Matt spat his drink out, as Jack mentioned. Uh, a fax. The, the possibility of sending a facsimile. Yeah. I mean, like, we could always put Chunk's pager number out there. 2019, <laughs> mate. Who's sending yeah. faxes? Wait, as per your letter, dickhead. I'm still going to drink it. Your letter? No, your positive story. They could send us a letter. I mean, it will have probably recorded the next one by the time we get it, but that's by the by. But if you want to send us a letter... Feel free. Also, you don't know the address, but feel free. <laughs> yeah. you just put it in the post and write Chunk Jack and Matt's podcast. Yeah, I'm sure it'll get there. Um, also, um, you've brought up a good thing. Like, we could maybe bring the item that we want to bring into Utopia at the next episode: uh, a fax machine. Wow! Because it's Utopia, we can have anything. Absolutely not. Right. Okay. I solved that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I think it's aside from nerves and potentially not recording the first half of this we'll find out afterwards um but uh yeah i think it's been all right a bit bit shaky on the jingles and whatnot but i think uh i think we'll get boss a bit lads mm. yeah anything you want to add or take away do you reckon um or, i don't know what is this maths lesson yeah <laughs> took me a minute to tweak onto that Anything you want to yeah. have or take away uh, I guns. was a bit slow on the uptake to that <laughs> um, I'll just I'll just want to thank you boys Yeah, Not in a, a sad, gay, it? emotional yeah. way But it's it's, uh, it's been a good crack yeah. Yeah. And I look forward to the next one Yeah sweet um, Yeah so 
anyone who does listen to this um, that we send it out to um, just uh, yeah drop us a message just uh, give us a bit of feedback see what you reckon uh, generally uh, sort of any titles for the different parts of the show as well they're sort of open to an interpretation if anyone's that. got any ideas and you want to send us a fax <laughs> by all means do yeah didn't right. have a drink that time <laughs> <laughs> right now we just need the outro and I thought we've had the US national anthem um I couldn't actually find the English one to download um, off the site. I was getting everything off. I was going to say, how did you not find it? The trouble is, Pornhub doesn't have a lot of national anthems. <laughs> oh, so, um, there we go. Uh, um, but yeah, gone. so I thought, why not a bit of a uh, Royal Britannia just to... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to sing over it because I'm, I'm not disrespectful, but fuck the Yanks. Patriotic, you know I mean? boys. <laughs> yeah. Patriotic. Yeah. Right, so, uh, yeah, thank you for listening. I've been Chunky T. Thank you very much and goodbye. I've been Jack. Goodbye. I've been Matt, Toodle Pip. 